you can channel anxiety into like, I'm just excited. I'm just productive. <laughs> and it feels like a driving force in my life, especially professionally. You know, and I think a lot of comedians feel like this as far as dealing with their mental health goes. It's like, oh, if I get better, I won't be funny. That is comedian Taylor Tomlinson on Neil Brennan's Blocks podcast, which is my new favorite podcast, not because it's about comedy, which I love, and not because its goal is to shame shame, which I really love. It's my new favorite pod because each episode's timestamps are broken down by the guest's psychological idiosyncrasies, their blocks. And my psychological idiosyncrasy just so happens to be observing other people's psychological idiosyncrasies arranged very neatly. And what Taylor is talking about reminded me of this study in which one group of participants were instructed to say the words out loud, I'm excited, before doing an anxiety inducing activity like karaoke, public speaking, or a math test. While another group of participants were left to stew in their own anxiety ridden internal monologue before performing the exact same activities. The I'm excited people performed on average 17% better at karaoke, 17% better at public speaking, and 22% better on the math test. But these I'm excited people, they were not actually less anxious. This is the important part. What they had done is they had reappraised their anxiety as excitement. See, in the body, anxiety and excitement are quite close together because they're both higher states of arousal. However, anxiety is lower in positivity than excitement, so the brain perceives it as more of a threat whereas it perceives excitement as more of an opportunity. Now, when we feel anxious, what we probably prefer to feel is calm, which is down here, and depressed states would be here. So in part, what the study is suggesting is that when we're already in a high arousal state, it may be a smoother path to scoot over to excitement rather than trying to force calmness from an already high arousal place. Now, of course, High anxiety is debilitating and doesn't always leave space for this choose your own anxiety adventure option. So basically what we're talking about here is more mid-level anxiety. And I have no idea if this anxiety to excitement shift is what helps Taylor Tomlinson repurpose her anxiety into a driving force, but it is pretty common for people to find an adaptive function within their mental health struggles. And it's always interesting to hear about the ways in which people might change their shit to manure. And it's also cool to hear about the ways people choose not to change their shit at all. Like it's, it's that like nervous energy. If you can just like harness it, it's fine. And maybe it's because I'm used to it. I don't know. And again, it feels like a driving force in my life, especially professionally. It tends to be such a fine balance though with creatives because on one hand, working through your stuff can lead to real growth, real beauty, and real laughs, which is why comedians like Taylor Tomlinson are such treasures. But on the other hand, if we feel like our mental health struggles are a part of our driving force or a part of who we are deep down as a person, then fully escaping them is kind of like escaping a cult. And that's why I remain a devotee of the one true leader, my anxiety-ridden internal monologue. My leader is saying things that I have always thought but have been too afraid to share. Does he make extreme predictions about the future, specifically my future, with an unearned confidence almost all the time? Yes, but that's what visionaries do. And is our relationship sexual in nature? Also yes. Sex acts between you and your anxiety are the ultimate self-love. 